Next up, we have Shavalia, who I see is here. Hi, Shavalia. Hello. Hey, nice to see you. So uh, I'm going to introduce you. So Shivalia Mamba. Uh, Shivalia was born a creative individual with a grand imagination and a love for the outdoors, mainly because she could satiate all her other senses, particularly her sense of smell. Raised around berry bushes, pine trees, and a pond, she was always surrounded by nature's perfume. Although an educator, her love for perfumery and fragrance began to crave her attention for more pursuit, and she found herself researching and reading about everything related to scent. This rekindled passion motivated her to want to speak with others about what she'd been reading. And as destiny would have it, in her conversations, she was met with the need, with the need that her brand Pink Mahogany was to fulfill, which was to provide a collection with people like herself, an artistic yet conscious consumer in the forefront of her mind. Little did she know she would end up expanding her collection to include products for mental clarity due to losing her third born son shortly after birth in 2018. Um, uh, Pink Mahogany has become much larger, larger than Chevalia and the people and businesses that are served. It's now also about her own healing through fragrance. Chevalia resides in Longview, Texas by way of Dallas after 14 years and is mother of five-year-old identical twin boys. And I don't know how you have the time to do this talk with that in <laughs> mind, but I'm very glad that you're here and I'd love to welcome Chevalia. Thank you so much for having me. I'm, I'm definitely honored to uh, be able to be amongst such great panelists. Um, oh, something's in my eye. Um, so I am a musician by trade as well as um, I'm classically trained as well as played by ear. So I have kind of a duality there. Um, so I would love to speak with you all about my creative process because I've, I've gotten a lot of questions about how I approach fragrance as a self-taught perfumer, um, as a musician. So I think in terms of, of notes, there are a lot of vocabulary terms that I think could go for both music as well as fragrance. We have fragrance notes, we have um, accords. So I think in terms of creating a fragrance as um, building a song, if that makes sense, um, because I have the ability to play different styles of music, different genres of music. So when I create, I try to think, what do I want the beginning of the song to be? Or what do I want the, the initialization of the fragrance to be on the skin or in the air if I'm creating a room spray? So I have a couple of vocabulary terms and I, I will talk slow so that I can explain them thoroughly. Um, there are three particular, actually four particular vocabulary terms that I will be discussing with you today to explain my creative process in, uh, in fragrance creation. First off, we have what's called sonata form. And some of you may have heard sonata form before. It's an older term and it basically is representative of types of music that was composed in um, classical, the classical musical period, all the way up to the 20th century. So there are three main movements in what's called sonata form. And they, once I, I talk about them, I'm sure you will be able to identify how it relates to fragrance. The first um, vocabulary term or the initialization of fragrance creation for me is called the exposition. And in the exposition, you have, it's actually just the introduction of a piece. Um, the, it's the primary thematic introduction so it's kind of subtle, just like top notes would be in, in fragrance creation. If you have citruses or your lighter notes, then the exposition would be the introduction of that fragrance. So just to kind of give you a sneak peek into um, how the fragrance might unfold to leave you on, on the edge of your seat per se. In the exposition or in the fragrance, you can have subdivisions. So Say for example, I'm using, uh, let's see, I'm at my organ now, so I'm trying to see if I have some lemon. Where is it? Yes. So let's just say that I'm starting with lemon. Well, I want it to be, or to have a little bit more depth, but I still want it to be in the citrus category. So I would use lemon. I might use um, a little bit of lime, um, other forms of lemon from different, um, different areas of the world so that it's not just a linear type of scent. So that would be the exposition of the fragrance, the beginning of the fragrance, the top notes of the fragrance. And in the, as the, those top notes start to dissipate or start to transition, 
the next part of, of how I create my fragrances using scent as my, as my guide and using music as my guide would be the development. So in the development, just as it says, that means that the fragrance or that the song, because I'm using a duality here, the fragrance song or the scent music starts to play on the skin, tying in that exposition. So tying in the beginning notes, tying in the introduction, but now you have a little bit more depth. It's starting to develop into um, the heart of the fragrance. Or if you're thinking in terms of music like I do, it would be the heartbeat or the middle of the song. And just the definition of development, remember we're talking about sonata form. So in the development, it plays on the exposition. So it's, it's starting to become a little bit more complex. So if we're thinking in terms of instruments per se, the, the exposition would be, um, if you think of an orchestra, the exposition would be maybe the strings are coming in. Those are the top notes that come in on the skin and then you kind of smell the top notes. You're like, okay, I smell the lemon, I smell the lime. And then it develops into the heart of the fragrance or the heart of the song, which would be then you start to add in, if you have a choir or a soloist, they start to sing, not too loudly, but they just start to sing enough where you can hear them a little bit over the, the orchestra that starts to play or the strings that start to play. So, but they're all coming in together in tandem or in, in unity, so to speak. So the development also kind of takes you through several different conversations. So if we have heart notes, let's just say florals, we don't want it to just be centered, or I wouldn't want it to just be centered around a particular floral. I would rather it be a combination or an accord of florals. So that helps with my, my fragrance palette to develop that fragrance and develop the scent where you're going from the top notes to the middle notes or to the heartbeat of the song. And then the, the last um, vocabulary term, the musical term, is actually called the recapitulation. And I know it sounds like a long term or a long vocabulary word. It just simply means now we're tying in the beginning of the song, beginning of the fragrance, to the middle of the fragrance. So you may still be able to smell those top notes. You may still be able to get um, some uh, nuances of the heartbeat. But now we're bringing the song or the fragrance to its conclusion, not to say that it's going to end, but just to bring it to a conclusion where now we can feel the depth of the song, we can feel the depth of the fragrance on the skin. And then when we go back to smell it, we, we may not smell those top notes anymore, but we do definitely now have more of an understanding of, of what the perfumer, in this case myself, what I wanted to convey through those bass notes, through those lingering notes, oak moss, vetiver, um, musk. It just depends on, on the type of fragrance that I would be creating at that particular moment. So just to, to sum everything up before I go a little bit deeper, we have sonata form, which is a musical term that is talking about a theme, a type of theme, a musical theme that can be subdivided. We have the exposition, top notes, the development, the heart notes, and the recapitulation, which would be the bass notes. So when I'm creating, um, it depends on the type of inspiration that I have. Sometimes I actually phantom smell a scent before I actually sit down at my organ and try to, to start notating or start to write out the fragrance or write out the song, if you will, writing out the notes. Um, it depends, I'm, I'm inspired by many different things, as I'm sure we all are as creatives. Um, I could be outside and phantom smell something, or it could be just a thought that I'll have that reminds me of either a family member or a happy time in my life, or it could even be a solemn time. So I use that and translate that to how do I want this particular note to play in my song? And how do I want that song to translate on the skin? So I'm thinking in terms of a choir, a soloist, um, an a cappella piece, an orchestra? Do I want it to be instrumental? Do I even want to have singers in this particular song? Do I want any particular note to stand out? And so I take all of those different factors into consideration as I'm creating. And then as I'm writing everything down, sometimes it changes after I smell it on the skin or I beta test it on, on other people or even put it on my blotter. If I feel like one or more of the, the components are too loud or not loud enough, then I'll amp it up so that maybe the soloist needs to sing a little bit longer. 
or the choir needs to back off just a little bit. So it's, it's definitely a musical process for me to, to create. And I also like to make sure that I don't put just my own interpretation in, even though I'm the writer of the song or the creator of the song. I try to think in terms of uh, how should it be in harmony? You know, I know I'm using a lot of musical terms. This is how I think. How should the fragrance harmonize with the skin? Or how could I make it harmonize better with the skin after it's sat for a couple of weeks and I notice that something may be off or I want to, to downplay one of the components? So um, just in, in short, I, I like to take uh, one of the most important principles for me is making sure that I am allowing my creativity to completely flow. Sometimes I actually work with music playing in the background, and sometimes I just like to work in complete silence so that I'm not distracted. It just kind of depends on the angle that I'm trying to take. So um, in the fragrances that I create, I do have uh, accords or different chords in music that are playing. Sometimes I want to have a group of fragrance notes and not necessarily have a lot of bass notes or not have a lot of the bass or the bass or the tenor singing in that particular fragrance or singing in that particular scent song. I may want it to be much lighter if it's going to be for a room spray or for someone who may be a little bit sensitive uh, because believe it or not, I have people who come to me because they are sensitive to fragrance, but they would like to use scent for their home, but they don't want it to be too heavy. So in those particular cases, I do have to definitely scale down so that it's not as potent, so that we don't have any um, allergic reactions or sensitivities in those who may already be sensitive. But when I'm creating, I definitely think in terms of, of top, middle, and bass, but I also correlate that to um, top singers, middle singers, or bass singers. And that kind of determines the types of notes that I use. Um, if I want it to be an eau de parfum or an eau de toilette, do I want it to uh, be a little dark in, in, in tone or on the skin, or do I want it to have more of a light fleeting type of scent? So this is pretty much the way that I create all of my fragrances and in the complete collections from the perfumes all the way to hand sanitizers. So just to recap once more, we have Sonata Form which is the way that I approach my perfumes, the way that I approach the creation of perfumes. And we have in the Sonata form, three different um, parts of that form. The exposition, which is the introduction, the development, which is the heart of the song or the heart of the fragrance, and then the recapitulation, which is the conclusion, but it also ties in the exposition and the development. And that's pretty much how I create all of my fragrances. Um, that's, that's all I have right now. I hope that you all have some questions and I hope that this was definitely helpful and provided some insight as far as um, coming from a self-taught perfumer's perspective who also happens to be a musician. And I know that a lot of musicians are actually into fragrances. So that, that's it. I know it sounds like a lot. It is it's definitely a lot when you're creating anything, whether it's an art form, painting, um, ceramics, but that is, that's how I create and how I approach perfumery to share the art with all of you. I have a quick question and I'm sorry, I had to step mm -hmm. away for a minute during your talk, so forgive me if you sure. covered this, but how did you that's come okay. to perfumery? What was the thing that, that brought you there? Oh, um, I actually, growing up in a rural city or a rural town, um, scent has always been a very important part of my life. Uh, I was always outside. I was always enjoying nature. Pine trees are very prominent here in Longview. So I was always picking apart when the pine needles would fall off of the trees. I would pick them up and just smell them at different stages, whether it sat out in the sun or whether it had just fallen off the tree. Um, and <laughs> my family jokes with me because I've always had a keen sense of smell. So when we would have guests, I would hide downstairs in our, in our family home and <laughs> wait for the guests to leave because I wanted, I don't know why I did that, but I wanted to challenge myself on who was there. So when they would ring the doorbell, I would run wow. as fast as I could to the other side of the house so that I would not see them. And when That's they would amazing. leave, <laughs> yes, when they would leave, then I would go and I know that you all are probably gonna laugh, I still laugh. I would go and sniff the couch cushion where they sat. <laughs> <laughs> and I would tell my mom, 
or ask my mom, did, did aunt so-and-so sit here? And she would look at me so strange and say, yes, how did you know that? But so I trained my, my nose. I didn't realize that's what I was doing, but I trained my nose at a very early age and it kind of turned into a, not an obsession, but just a, a, an affinity to want to learn more about different scents, why they smell the way they do, why do uh, different fruits smell the way they do. So it, it just kind of spiraled upward, not downward from there. And every time I would go to a store with my mom in my youth, I had to go to the fragrance counter. So it was, it was always a pull a natural gravitation for me to want to go and explore scent. So in, in short, that's, I think that scent chose me as opposed to me going out and trying to just become a, a fragrance designer or a nose. It's funny, a lot of perfumer people say the same thing. It's sort of they, <laughs> they, they were smelling things and their parents were like, what's the matter with you? <laughs> you know, like, it's cool. Right. Um, Monica has a question. Uh, she says, this is so wonderful. Uh, do you, you create music to accompany the release of any of your scents? Um, I have not. The closest that I've gotten, because I mean, it's pretty time consuming. Um, the closest that I've gotten is when I first released my website in its beta stages, I did the background music. It's, it's no longer up, but I, I'll probably try to revisit that and add that music or um, at least try to, behind my videos on Instagram, start implementing music that I've created. So I definitely want to revisit it. Um, if, you know, those of you that do know about scent and music, they are both very time consuming because if you want to have a nice piece or a nice fragrance, then it's going to take some time to develop. But that excellent question, and I'm definitely going to revisit that to add music. Yeah, it seems like it would be a natural fit. Um, so Donna follows up with, I guess, basically, uh, yeah, well, it's basically the same question. Oh, actually, there's a variation. Do you, do you tend to create music and scent uh, simultaneously? Like, do they inform each other when you're working on them separately? Um, yes and no. Like, I, I can think of a particular song when I'm creating a certain scent or when I'm working with certain materials. And it's a song that's already out. It's not a song that I've created. And it kind of motivates me to go in a different direction. So it's, it's a lot that happens sometimes. At, at, at one time, I call them downloads. I get downloads pretty quickly. And then sometimes there's no, no music involved at all. It's strictly scent and even colors. I'm, I'm not a synesthet, but I do think in terms of color sometimes, depending on, on what materials I'm working with. Uh, on the topic of synesthesia, so Tammy uh, in Australia, hi Tammy, um, up early, uh, asks, do you hear scents um, on the skin as well as when you compose with them? I mean, do you have that association between, between hear hearing and smelling? Um, not necessarily, not necessarily, but I, I do know people that, that they do have that ability. However, that's, that's not one of my strong suits. That, that's... Okay, that's good. I mean, I think synesthesia can be really actually quite painful for people who have it. Mm -hmm. That's what I've heard from, from people who really have it. They're like, it's actually not cool. It sucks, you know. Um, so it's good. It's probably good that we don't have synesthesia. So Amanda asks, um, did you compose your perfumes with a musical framework in mind from the get go? Or is it something that you recognized and tuned into as you developed your perfume practice? It's actually something that I realized uh, longer or after I had been in business for a while that that's actually how I think. Um, I, I kind of tried to shy away from it in the beginning because I didn't, you know, I didn't want to be cliche, even though I knew that scent and music were both a very strong part of my life. But I noticed that I thought in terms of musical vocabulary, um, even from things that I remember um, from my college days or high school days. And I was like, oh my gosh, there's a connection in the way that I actually approach perfumery. So I actually embraced it. And, and once I embraced it, I think it actually helped me to um, understand fragrance a lot more in, in, in just how I approach materials or how I use materials or the materials that I choose to select for the collection that I have currently. Just, I wanna share a couple of comments. Um, so uh, Susanya Sturthis, who's speaking next, actually says, wow, Chevalier, many exclamation points. Um, <laughs> Tammy says, thank you, so interesting and illuminating. Mark says, hi, Chevalier, Mark here from Pushpack uh, in London. Hey, Mark. I love Hello, your Mark. enthusiastic question. Um, Mary Ellen uh, Child, I think also in Texas, Mary Ellen, maybe I got that wrong, um, says, really enjoying your talk, Chevalier. I am a composer of music as well, so I can relate. Awesome. Sherry, yeah. Sherry Backman says, uh, 
Well, actually, we answered those, but asked about the composition to matching the scent, but you covered that. Um, and then, okay, so Lisa Bradley wants to know if either of your little boys is interested in scent wearing or making. They are. <laughs> they, really? When they see me, <laughs> yes. When they see me spritz something on or when they, when they come to my office, you know, I don't let them come inside my actual office, so I have them in the waiting area. But they, when they were about two, um, I would give them just testing strips. It didn't have anything on them, and they would just pretend that it did have scent on them. So they've, they've kind of been inducted <laughs> um, at a very early age. They, they like to wear fragrance. I do not allow them to wear it all the time. It's just for special occasions. And I'm very um, discerning on what I allow them to put on the skin. You know, I allow them to wear lotions and things that are, are very light, but uh, they are definitely interested in scent. They could tell you the names of my whole collection. They may not know the notes that are in it, but I do have them to, I try to test them and just to see how acute their, their sense of smell is. And they can pretty much tell me some of the notes that are, that are in all of my fragrances. They may not know the name, but they can describe it. So it's very interesting to see and to witness my fragrances being interpreted uh, by someone so young. And it's, it's, uh, it makes me feel good that they're interested in what I'm doing. Do they have, I mean, cause I have a stepdaughter and when I, when I have her small things, I, I usually get like, ew or ooh, I like it you know but I haven't really spent time trying to train her so I mean are, are your mm -hmm. kids more are you are you educating them about smelling and then the notes and stuff like obviously you are you're a perfumer so I, I do but I don't um I don't force them to like if I'm working on something I don't say hey hey here come smell this naturally they'll just try to come and smell or if i put on some perfume or some lotion, they are always glued to me because they know, I think they know that that's a part of me. So they're naturally interested. And I don't know if it's because they're biased, but everything they smell, they're like, mm, or yes. Oh, they're nice kids. <laughs> now, <laughs> they're nice kids. <laughs> now, if we go out somewhere and they, they smell something that's not, <laughs> not as pleasant, they will say, mommy, what is that smell? It, and then they will explain what it smells like. And if it happens to be a person, then I just try to, I just try to change the subject because you know kids are very vocal and they just say what's on there. Yeah, mind. they're honest, you know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. For good or for bad. Um, okay, so Susan uh, asks, uh, says, love the way you create using the sonata form. Don't know anything about musical forms, but do you think using different musical forms from sonata? Uh, could lead to different forms of fragrance. Maybe some perfumers, maybe ones perfumers haven't thought of yet. And how might those musical or fragrance forms be shaped? There, oh my gosh, there are so many different possibilities. And I think a lot of perfumers, particularly what you would call indie or niche perfumers that don't have that formal training. So there's not a, a set form. Um, I think in that particular case, it could even cause the fragrance to not have base notes or not have top notes or be just a completely linear fragrance. It takes some of the limitations off, I think, when you start to think in terms of different musical forms. And especially if you want to mirror whatever that particular musical form is, it definitely will change the, the way that the fragrance is created, which will in, in turn change how it smells or how it plays on the skin. So it's, it's definitely, a, a, I think, um, an experience worthy of exploration. I have one last question, I think. And I, I'm curious about how you see the independent perfume world mm -hmm. sort of progressing, you know, vis-a-vis -vis the, the mainstream, you know. Um, do, you, do you feel like there's, there's more attention for independent in, artisan perfumers? Or I don't know, what's, um, your, what's your perception I, of the industry? I, I do, um, only because I think a lot of people have started to look at perfumery as an art form. Um, I know when I was coming up, I didn't necessarily look at it as an art form because I was only introduced to the fragrances that were on the shelves. So like the big name brands, I didn't realize that there were independent brands until hmm, probably around 2004, maybe. It was when I kind of started my journey into learning about the actual perfumer. And I would see that some of them would, would have, will have worked with uh, big name brands, but then they may have had their own brand. So that was very intriguing to me. So I definitely think that, uh, especially during this time, indie brands are getting a lot more, I don't want to say notoriety, but they're, they're getting a lot more um, exposure 
because of the art form or the stories that are behind it. We don't often hear, at least I don't, hear about the stories behind the big name brands. And I think it's because they've already, they've already um, developed the brand. They're already out there. So it's more of learning about that story that connects the consumer with the actual brand or with the actual person behind the brand. So that's why I feel like indie brands or indie perfumers are getting a little bit more exposure right now. Yeah, that's good. It's a good thing for mm -hmm. everybody. Um, one last thing is Don Donna Elmastri, who's a perfumer up in Montreal, um, has been working with music as well. I'm sure you guys are familiar with each other from Instagram and whatnot, but she brings up the fact that she, her, her inspiration has largely been, not largely, but partially been Arabic music, which works with quarter mm. tones. Oh, wow. Which is kind of cool to think about, like what a quarter mm -hmm. tone, how that would interpret to scent. Right, um, right. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, that, that is, we start talking about music, you see my face light up. I, I get so many, just so much inspiration because there, the possibilities for different scents, different types of scents, different angles to take are really endless. You know, there's no box. I don't think there's, there's no set box to, uh, to put fragrance in because each composer is going to have a different interpretation of the song. Yeah, much like each perfumer is going to have a different interpretation of the sun. So. Mm -hmm. Well, cool. Well, thank you so much for your time, Shivali, and for sharing your thoughts. Is there a place where we could find out about your music as well? Um, or is I that actually, sort of, do you want to keep that separate? No, no, no. I'm actually working on that. And, and believe it or not, after my, uh, my third born son transitioned, I was like, you know what? I didn't take his transition as, as, a, um, as a loss. It was more of a, a propelling for me to pick music back up. So in his honor, I am going to be uh, definitely offering the opportunity for people to see more of a glimpse into, into the musical side of me. So I will, I'm actually going to be working with a college to have them have the college choir to sing one of my pieces that's been sitting on the shelf collecting dust. So wow. <laughs> it's funny you mentioned that. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. That's really, and what a, what a beautiful uh, homage to, to, your, to your child. Mm -hmm. Yes, ma'am. Yes, All right. Well, thank you so much for your time, Shivalia, and we'll be thank in you. touch. And with your permission, we'll post your talk <laughs> online and all sure. that. So. Sure. Sure. Yeah. Thank you so much cool. for having me. And I appreciate all of the comments and all of the encouragement, as well as the questions. Thank you guys so much.